Hello everybody, this is Bud and as you can see we are back in the default almost uh, configuration of i3 and this is the continuation of that configuring i3 from scratch. Uh, I guess I can say that immediately here so uh, people don't waste any time. I will talk about i3 run in this video and how it works, how to set it up and stuff like that. So maybe some uh, viewers already know everything about it. And then maybe, <laughs> um, yeah, you get it. But we talk about i3 run. But first, let's open Sublime. You can go to Workspace 2. And also let's open Qt Browser, which can go to Workspace 3. There, all right. So, um, that last video where we configured uh, i3 from scratch, um, I um, created this modified version of the i3 config file and we replaced uh, a bunch of the built-in commands for moving and focusing and stuff like that with some of my i3 as uh, commands here. Uh, I actually forgot to save that configuration. So what I have done here is actually grabbing the config that, I, that is available on um, the i3 as wiki which is here, uh, you can find i3 config example here. Um, so I copied this uh, uh, configuration here, which you can do and replace your i3 config with this one. Um, but I actually made uh, some modifications to it. I, I commented out the arrow keys here and instead use uh, vi navigation, h-a-k-l. Uh, if you do that, you also have to make sure that you uh, find a, something to do with this key binding, mod plus h. It's in the default i3 configuration. Uh, that will clash with the mod h, uh, which is uh, like move left or focus left. Uh, I also switched uh, the order here uh, of for focus and move, like or shift switched uh, the key bindings because I prefer to have focus with mod shift and move with just mo mod. Uh, I'm just used to that, whatever. <clears throat> Let's see, is there anything more? Uh, yeah, of course, of course, the most important thing. I talked uh, about it in the last video that there are some preferences that I just need <laughs> to have enabled, otherwise I will go insane, so I also added those preferences. All right, uh, i3 run it's also part of the i3s uh, collection of scripts here and um, it is used to run raise or hide windows in i3 wm so one command does a lot of things um, uh, it's not like the other like uh, focusing and moving where this completely replaces a functionality in i3 you, sometimes you want to use this but sometimes it's fine to use uh, I guess exec is what's closest to this, but you actually need to use exec to run this command since it is still an external command, but it, it will become clear soon. Uh, i3 run will try to find a window matching a criteria. Criteria is specified with one or more, more command line options, class, instance, title, con ID, win ID. Uh, if you specify multiple criteria, all of them must match for the window to be considered found and sometimes it can find it it will find multiple windows that matches uh, the criteria and if it does that it will just choose one at random or i guess it's said the random but wh whatever uh, don't try when you do this you want to be specific so it will find a specific window it will become clear what all of this means and, and it's not difficult or weird or anything. You will see, it's actually very nice. Uh, because this is the whole um, reason why to use this. Because you give it a window, a target window. And depending on the state of that window, that target window, different actions will be taken by i3 run here. So if it's active, it will send it to the scratch pad. If it is on the scratch pad, it will show the window or bring it to the current workspace. Uh, if the window is not on the current workspace, then it will go to that workspace and focus that window. Uh, if the window is not active, not on the scratch pad, but it is on the same workspace, 
as we currently view, then it will just focus the window. If it cannot find uh, the target window, then it will instead execute a command. That's how it works. Uh, let's see what that really means by start using this. So to start using it, of course, you have to install i3s. I showed you that in the last video. You can install it from AUR if you are using an Arch based distribution. But um, really, it's very easy to install this on any distro. Uh, you just uh, clone this repository and then you do make make install or you don't even have to do make make because there are nothing to compile. It's just uh, bash scripts, actually. So you do make install and then it will here are the instructions, whatever. But the easiest, just install it from AR, you know, and then you will get the updates and stuff like that when <laughs> updates are made. Because uh, we can see here that I have actually made, I think, four updates since the last video. I, I discovered a bunch of small uh, uh, issues uh, that I have fi fixed here. Um, actually, while trying to record <laughs> this exact video. It was like some embarrassing uh, uh, bug uh, that I didn't know about. For, for example, this prevent i 3 ws variable getting set when making a tile window floating with the float option. Didn't know about that, but now I know and now it's fixed. Whatever. Um, i3run. So, said a lot there about specific window, instance, class, window title, whatever. I think I will do this. Open a terminal, make the window a little bit smaller, change the font size, and then execute this secret, top secret technology that's called i3info. Uh, it's not available uh, anywhere outside my computer. It's top secret, <laughs> whatever. Uh, but this uh, script here, it displays the window title, the instance name, the class name, uh, the window type, if there are any marks on a window, uh, uh, geometry of the window, like x, y, width, height of the uh, currently active window, and window ID, container ID. And if I focus a different window, it will change uh, the content here. Uh, the, all of, well, not all of it, but a lot of this will be relevant here, and it's good to, to keep an eye here uh, on this output throughout this video to see what's going on. But, and also a very neat uh, feature here is that if I press a key binding there, I pressed super V or mod V uh, and that executed the command split V there, super return. It uh, executed this command, i3 sensible terminal. So it's also a good uh, thing here for, for you uh, to keep an eye on what key bindings I pressed in case I forget to mention it or whatever, you know. All right, um, we need to have a application to, to test this i3 run stuff with. Um, and I think we start with a terminal. So even if we have a, a key binding here, i3 sensible terminal, terminal super return, let's create a, our own version of that. So bind sum um, mod plus T maybe for terminal, I don't know. Um, exec no start up ID and you are XVT because that's the terminal I prefer to use. Save and reload. And now I can press mod T and there. Super T, you are XVT. Beautiful. Press it again. What will happen? Another terminal. Another terminal. Great. Um, also, why? what's going on here? Why are these terminals here and these terminals are like in a different layout somehow? It's because uh, there is actually two different layouts here now. We have a split H uh, layout here. Uh, and we have a split V layout here. That was what happened there. Uh, <laughs> I guess you have to uh, uh, go back in the video and look there when I explained this uh, key binding. So I, pr I pressed uh, mod V which is uh, a default key binding to, to make a vertical split of a window. And then in the last video, uh, we, we added a key binding to change the layout, change the, uh, and we can change all layouts with a single key binding. So if I press mod E, changes the, the well, now it didn't work as I wanted here. God damn it, does it work here? 
yeah, here I can change at least the layout here. So then, then I don't know. I wanted to make these windows tabbed, but I couldn't do that. Whatever. Okay, whatever. Forget what I said there. It's it's like impossible to use the default i3 uh, stuff there. Not even I can do that. So don't feel bad if you don't understand or cannot use i3. Um, mod t exec no startup id urxvt. urxvt or any other terminal emulator have this option e dash e and that uh, is used to execute a program when you start the terminal for example hdop classic program everyone likes hdop pressing mod t ah we also didn't reload so it wasn't in effect reload pressing mod t there now we got a hdop press it again we got a hdop if I would, would like hdop in this split here, this vertical one, I can just focus one of those windows, press mod T, and there you see it uh, opens terminal next to the active one. If I press it again, we will get a hdop below that one. If this would have focus, press mod T, you see then hdop appears here. So there is some logic to this and stuff, but uh, still inconvenient to use in my opinion. Uh, also, what, <laughs> this looks like a complete mess now. And um, I don't think anyone uh, opens multiple instances of HDOP, at, at least not no one intends doing so, but it is easy to do that because you, you might have a key binding just like this for HDOP. Uh, with i3 run, if we would add this uh, command into i with i3 run instead, then it would only open one instance of HDOP. Uh, and if it already exists, it, it will just focus that or hide it if it's active. Uh, and it's really easy to convert this command here to an i3 run equivalent. The problem is that i3 run, as I mentioned, it needs uh, a target window. It needs to know what window it should look for if it exists and stuff. Um, and as it is now, it is very difficult to, to find this HDOP window. It is possible, you will see here, if we press mod T, we can see in our uh, listener subscriber script here that the window title is HTOP. So that is a unique identifier we could use here for this. Uh, but the instance name is urxvt and the class name is urxvt. And that is true for all of these terminals here. Uh, you see all of them have the same instance and class name. And even if we could use the window title, I, I really think you shouldn't use the window title as a criteria like this ever, because the window title is unpredictable. It changes on almost all uh, applications, changes it. And here it is actually URXVT that have changed its default window title to HDOP. Sublime changes the window title whenever you change file, the window title changes. Uh, and um, the browser changes window title whenever you open a, a new tab or a new URL, you know. So the window title is very unreliable to use as a criteria. It's much better to use the instance or the class or both of them, actually. Uh, and that's very easy to do with uh, terminal emulators. You can, you can specify the, the instance name you want this terminal to have by using the name option. That's uh, true for URXVT at least. Uh, I think it's a different one for other terminal emulators. Let's see, I think I have a script actually. Mm, maybe. No, no, I don't have it in bin, Wh whatever. And also I forgot to do this there. This was just so I can use uh, caps lock as the escape key, whatever. Um, name here, that is for URXVT. Uh, in ST, I think it's just N and Kitty does something else. And uh, But as far as I know, all terminal emulators I have tried, and I have tried a lot of them, a lot of different uh, emulators, and all of them have a, a version of this uh, thing. But then we say name, and then we can say htop window. Uh, reload config, press mod T. There, now we can see we have htop with the instance name htop window. Um, 
and that's a much better criteria for i3 run. It would work with the window title, I'm just saying, but try never to use that. Um, so if we want to, to use i3 run instead of, of just uh, plain starting urxvt here, we instead, we could add a bunch of spaces here just so we see that we are, this is what we are doing. Uh, i3 run, now we execute that instead here. Uh, give it the criteria instance h top window um, and then you also want to give a command to i3 run uh, to execute if it cannot find the target window and this might look a bit weird here for some uh, that to enter the command you do this dash dash and then it will just take everything after these double dashes will be the command to execute uh, and that's uh, quite nice actually because then it, the the options and stuff here they will never clash with the i3 run up options or anything so you can add quite complicated commands here with nested quotes and stuff like that that should work uh, there is a different way uh, this was just recently added here this double dash dash uh, version of adding commands uh, previously you would do something like this instead using the command line option command uh, and then you, you needed to put the command in quotes like this so it became a single argument to this uh, option um, but that gets messy when you start having um, nested quotes and stuff in the commands which is not like completely uncommon to have and this is much better um, also I guess we can do this uh, since the line is getting quite long here um, there are two two things you can do in the i3 config to uh, make your lines shorter. Um, one is this. You can put a backslash and a new a line break like this. And now this is like the same line here. We just escape uh, the line break. So this is part of the same line. And maybe it would even make sense here to do this something like that and then it becomes clear here what's going on that uh, this uh, the blah yeah, yeah you get it whatever just to make it more readable I hope it's not confusing that it looks like this uh, if we load and press mod T now there now it executed this uh, crazy command here um, but the same result we got the htop window if I press it again uh, htop went away, press it again, it comes back. Uh, the thing is, it doesn't close the window and start a new one, it actually hides this window. Uh, we can see that it is the same if we apply some, some dummy filter here. Um, and press mod T, mod T, we can see it's the same window with the same filter and everything. So, just wanted to, wanted to demonstrate that. Um, I think this is the time of the vid video where we have to talk about what's going on here. What, how does this work? Uh, where is this window going when it's hidden? Uh, and that place is called the scratch pad. It's a built-in uh, feature of i3 and you can read about it in the i3 user guide also. I recommend you do that. Um, can just open it here in case we need to look for other things so scratch pad there it is there it is here you can read about it um, the scratch pad is really a special workspace that you cannot visit so here we have three workspaces one two three um, but there actually exists one more workspace that we cannot access and that's called the scratch pad and it actually have the the number is negative one, so minus one. And that workspace is kind of special. One, you, you cannot see it. The other uh, notable feature of the scratchpad is that uh, uh, all windows on the scratchpad have to be floating. Uh, let's quit this, it will get confusing if this still exists here. Um, we'll create a key binding here. And do mod plus s for scratchpad and uh, let's see now is it scratchpad no i think it's move scratchpad 
That is the command to uh, send a window to the scratchpad. Reload the config. Then we can uh, just create a terminal here. Mod return or super return and uh, mod s. Now we sent that terminal to the scratchpad. There is like no indication whatsoever. If you don't have a taskbar and stuff like that, you, there's no way knowing that that window is on the scratchpad. And the only way to get it back, or there are a couple of ways to get it back, is to show the scratchpad. You can do that with the command scratchpad show. You see, this is a bit <laughs> awkward also that here it's move scratchpad and then it's scratchpad show to show the scratchpad. Uh, shift plus S. We also have to have a different key binding, of course. Uh, so save, reload, and then mod shift S. There, now it brought that terminal back. You can do this uh, figlet, hello, just so we know that this is that terminal. Also, it gets this strange size here. I'm not sure how that works, why it gets this size, because that's the, not the default URXVT size, as far as I know. But whatever, uh, maybe it is. Um, shift Super S or Shift Mod S, uh, Scratchpad Show. That will show the scratchpad. And it actually, it doesn't show the window, it shows the scratchpad workspace, or at least one window from the scratchpad uh, uh, workspace. And now this gets even weirder now. If I press this key binding again, mod shift S. Now we toggle that window. It sent it back to the scratchpad. I press it again. It shows the same window. Uh, if a different window have focus here, for example, this one, and I press mod shift S, now it focuses <laughs> that scratchpad window because this is still a scratchpad window. Press mod shift S again, it toggles it. So in a way, it, it it is definitely usable if you use it like this. You have maybe one or two windows like that on the scratch pad and then you can toggle them with this mod shift S or whatever you use for as a key binding. And that kind of works, uh, but it gets extremely awkward when you have a lot of windows there on the scratch pad. So if, if I create another uh, terminal here, or we can take this one, I guess. Let's do figlet another. And I'm doing figlet here just so we can distinguish these terminals. And then we press mod S to move this to the scratch pad. Mod Shift S to show scratch pad. There, now we got this. Hello guy. Press Mod Shift S again. Now it's gone. Press Mod Shift S again. Now we get the other uh, uh, terminal. So that's how it works. If you have multiple windows, you 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 can cycle them with this uh, scratch pad show thing. But it's kind of inconvenient. You have to press two times for each window. So imagine if you have five windows. Worst case scenario, you have to press it ten times. <laughs> To, to get the window you, you, you want. Uh, there is one more way to, to do this that is slightly better and they actually uh, tell you about it here in the uh, user guide even if they use like the worst example ever because this is extremely confusing but you could use this uh, method here and I will show you what they mean hopefully in a less confusing way. Um, let's create a new terminal and from that terminal we create yet another terminal with a special instance name. Name special. Special cool. I just want to make sure that you get that you don't have to call it special. It can be called whatever you want. But we want a terminal with a, a specific instance name here. And here you can see also now it, it changed the window title to special cool because that's, that was the name. But when you execute a command inside your XVT here, then it changes the window title to the, the command instead. So it, window titles unreliable, don't use them as criteria. Uh, send this guy special cool here to uh, the scratch pad, mod S, or let's bring it back actually. Whoops, now I sent that also, sorry. Uh, scratch pad show focuses this, scratch pad show focuses this, scratch pad show, scratch pad show, special cool. I just wanted to make a figlet here. Figlet special. Okay, mod shift s, mod shift s, and there's that idiot. Yeah, I guess we have to keep him <laughs> because uh, that special cool is running from this one. So, whatever. Okay, bind sim mod plus mod1 plus s and then 
instance equals spe special cool scratch pad show reload okay so now mod mod one and that's alt key uh, plus s there that will now only toggle that special cool window. It will not cycle the other windows. And then you can have a specific uh, window on the scratch pad that you always target with this key binding. But for it to work, you first have to move that window to the scratch pad in some way. And that gets, it gets weird here if you want to have this set up uh, with the default uh, way of doing that. Uh, and that's why I think this uh, I3 run, it uses the same techniques here. It, s it sends windows to the scratch pad and it uses this in, in the background to target that specific window. So it basically does this and replaces special cool here with what we have set as instance when it wants to bring it back and stuff like that. So that means that we can press mod T here still. It's here. Press mod T again while it's active, sends it to the scratch pad, send it back. Another thing we can see here immediately is that this is sent back tiled. And that's, um, uh, you cannot do that with, with these key bindings uh, or with the default uh, i3 functionality. It always sends windows from the scratch pad, they come back floating. Uh, but uh, i3 run, it will remember if the window was floating or not. Um, and like for instance now it's floating mod t it's on the scratch pad mod t it's back floating and re remembers the position of floating windows and stuff like that it doesn't remember the position for a tile window uh, in a normal uh, setup here so for example or actually i don't want to do that whatever it doesn't remember uh, uh, the position of a tile window um Another thing you can do is, uh, let's go to a different workspace here. Now this will look a bit weird. I just open workspace 5 and here this is not a window what we see here. It's like a, uh, there's a bug in i3. I think they have fixed that uh, and it will be part of the next release of i3. I, if I'm not mistaken they have fixed this. So uh, because this is like an artifact of I think, I guess it's this window, the output of i3 here. I create that window, of course, this terminal have to be created before i3 starts. And when you do things like that, you have windows uh, already existing when i3 starts, uh, then it gets, you might get a broken wallpaper like this. Or the thing is the default wallpaper with i3 is not nothing, it's just black, but um, it can be a bit confusing. And I, I felt I had to mention that and we can actually fix it by just doing this. And now we should have some kind of wallpaper. Not sure if the young ones know what this wallpaper is, but some of you do. All right, um, floating window, htop cool, mod T toggles that guy. Uh, what happens if I go here to workspace five and press mod T? It brings us to the win uh, workspace where that uh, window exists and it focuses that window. So even, Let's see here, now Sublime has focus, I go to workspace 5, I go to workspace 1, I use just uh, mod 1 here to go to workspace 1. And then Sublime should have focus, or workspace 2. Sublime ha has focus because that was the focus window of that workspace. The difference here with uh, i3 run is that it will go to that workspace. Sublime still has focus here now, I go to 5, I press mod T, and now it's toggles to that workspace but also changes the focus to the window we are targeting. Uh, but sometimes you actually want, um, when I press mod T, especially for floating windows I guess, then it would be nice if it instead sent that window to this workspace from uh, workspace 2 here. And that is uh, possible uh, by using one of the command line options here to uh, with i3 run. Uh, that command line option is summon, instead of switching workspace, summon window to current workspace. So if, if we add that uh, option to i3 run, summon, save, reload. And now if I go to workspace 5, press mod T, boink, we get it here. And I can toggle it from here. Um, another thing is that even if you don't have the summon option, if we remove that, save, Reload, go to workspace 5, press mod T, you see now we don't have someone. 
But if the window is on the scratch pad, mod T, uh, and we fire the, the key binding from a different workspace, it, it will always bring it to the current workspace if it is on the uh, uh, scratch pad. But if it isn't, then you need to use someone if you want to bring it to the workspace you're uh, currently viewing. The reason why this is an option, it might look now like, yeah, of course you want this, but actually sometimes you don't want this, uh, specifically for floating windows. It would kind of be annoying if um, Sublime here would be sent to a different workspace because that would kind of break the layout here of this workspace and stuff like that. So this is something you have to figure out yourself uh, when you want to use this and when you don't want to use it. Uh, Monty. Let's see, there's this option also, it's very simple, no hide. It just means that it will prevent uh, the window be getting sent to the uh, scratch pad. That can also, I cannot really think of a, or I think I actually use it for Sublime in my own configuration because I find it annoying that Sublime is getting sent to the scratch pad. Sometimes you just, it's just a feeling you get sometimes. I wish that would never happen and then, then you can have this no hide and it will never send it to the scratch pad. So save, reload. Press mod T, it focuses HTOP, press mod T again, nothing happens because we have no height. So that's the gist of it. And also take note here, we are just using here normal i3 uh, setup here, uh, layout. There's no i3 feed and nothing special. You can, this is a useful program for anyone using i3, uh, i3 run it, that is. Uh, and we are just using one single key, key binding here to toggle and launch this window, focus it, send it to the scratch pad. It's just the same key binding and it kind of does what you expect it to do, you know, when you press it. Because what you expect to happen depends on the state of the window and i3 run figures all of that out for you. It's not like you have to remember this stuff here. It's uh, what, what you want to happen will happen. And it is also possible to... Uh, have i3 run, you can remove the command here. If we do that, it will still work. It would still focus and uh, send a window to the scratch pad and stuff like that. But if the window doesn't exist, then it doesn't have a command to execute and then nothing would happen. So sometimes, very rarely, but sometimes you actually want that as well and you could do that. Um, but i3 run, it gets even more powerful and interesting if you use this i3 uh, FIDA layout. We talked about it in the last video, uh, with the, where I could toggle tiled containers and bring them back and forth. Uh, and what happened there, I never, I don't think I said so, but what I actually do with i3 FIDA is I send those containers to the scratch pad as well. Um, and to activate the layout, um, you, you use um, the, the float toggling uh, feature of i3 FIDA. i3 FIDA dash dash float will toggle the floating state of a window. So if we would do this on that win this window here, then uh, it would make it tiled, but it would also enable the i3 FIDA layout on, on the current workspace in case if the i3 FIDA layout doesn't exist. And that that is uh, the bug I, I fixed there, <laughs> by the way, was that that this layout, um, this layout was created when you also made windows uh, floating. A tile window got floating, then it also created the layout, and that was kind of annoying. So, so that is what I fixed here. Um, I didn't know about it because I never use i3 in this default state. I always use that i3 FIDA layout, but whatever. Uh, another thing is that you shouldn't create this layout if you already have uh, tiled windows, it will get weird. So if you want to do this, uh, it's best to, to first make all windows floating and then uh, toggle the floating state. And hopefully now this works. It's tiled. Now this should be tabbed. Please work. It works. Nice. Tabbed. It works. Let's move this. Um, info window to the right yeah yeah of course i should have shown that uh, uh move it to the right there it's put it to the left but whatever move it to the left move it to the right and there now it's where i want it to be um shift focus to the left toggle tab with i3 flip um 
I have to show you this, of course. This program here that we use here to, to get the instance name and the uh, title and stuff like that, that is not available. And it will not be uh, for a while. I might make a public version of this, but not now and don't nag me about it. Uh, but I will show you how to get the instance name and, and class names and stuff like that, because it's very useful to be able to do that. Not just for i3 run here, but for, as you could see, you can use it with uh, i3 have this functionality as well. So you can make um, criteria for Windows. Read about it in the in the user guide. It's You can do some cool things with this. Um, and it's very useful to be able to know uh, the instance names. And I think um, the easiest way or one of the easiest ways is to use, uh, a, it's a command called WMCTRL, so window manager control, and then use the L option, it will list all windows. And here this number is the window ID, the X window ID, and it's actually the same as this, even if they don't look the same here because it's it's like in different base or whatever here. But uh, this is the window ID, this is the workspace, this is the host for some reason that is always visible here, and this is the window title. Also, just quickly here, the the um, Workspace, uh, they don't have to match up with the workspaces that i3 uh, call them because this is completely independent of i3. Um, so, workspace 0 here, that is actually workspace 1. And we can see we have two windows on workspace 1, and that seems to be accurate, right? We have uh, two URXVT windows there. Uh, and um, one here, that is workspace 2. So, that's this workspace. And we can see that we have Sublime, it's here, and we have um, some URXVT windows. Minus one, that is uh, the same, that is the scratch pad. So we have, have a bunch of windows now on the scratch pad. A special cool and three other terminals are on the scratch pad. So you see how weird the scratch pad is. You can have a lot of windows there that you have sent there without and forgot about, about them. I actually had already forgot about the special cool one, whatever. But we cannot see any class names or instance names here. To see that, you uh, also use the X option. So you can write this L and also X. And now it also displays the instance name and the class name of each window. Um, this is not something you have to do like constantly if you're not a crazy person like I am, because that's why I have this, because I, I kind of want to see this at all times. Like, what's the instance name? Wow. And uh, I also think I made a video in the past, um, a, a long time ago, how to display the instance and the class name in the polybar. Um, you can try to find that window and use that technique because that can be used to, to display that information in other locations as well. Um, but this is a good way to uh, find, find the instance and, and the class name. You have to install uh, WMCTRL. Uh, I guess it's available in the Pacman Arch repositories, and any other distribution should have this WMCTRL. It's it's like an old uh, command line utility that you, you can do a lot of other things with it. You can actually, as the name say here, control. You can you can move windows and and uh, you can also toggle, hide, hide them, show them, and minimize and do things like that. If your window manager support those actions, you can do it. It's, it's actually very powerful and really cool. And I know there exists uh, a new window manager uh, that is being developed uh, called Shod uh, by Phil Bush. He actually uses WMCTRL. Like the window manager doesn't have any commands by themselves. Instead, you use uh, WMCTRL or something similar to control all the actions of the window manager. I, I think that's a really cool approach because that, that makes uh, the code for the window manager very compact and very uh, small and portable and stuff like that. Um, but whatever, that's a sidetrack. Um, use this program to get the, the instance name or the class name or some other program. You can use xprop, for example, that's common as well. Just execute this, select a window, you get a mouse cursor here, a crosshair. I can select this terminal, 
and it prints information about that and you can see like um, here it is I think this is the class no this is the instance name and the or here this is better here is the WM class that means that this is the instance name and this is the class name uh, I guess name here that is the title so that's how xprop work uh, and that's also quite easy to use but it's also quite noisy I guess um, if you use uh, like xprop pipe it to grep for class or something like that maybe easier grep there uh, yeah I guess that's that's better so that's something you could do as well whatever you you can find find your way there is actually uh, some or there is a couple uh, of tools in um, not here in i3s um, that also lets you do this for example i3 get you could use that to, to get stuff like as you can see print info about specific window um, but the best program for this uh, case is actually i3 king uh, but i thought let's take that in the next video uh, and i will show you some things uh, we can do with i3 king and also how to uh, use that for a basic setup of i3 here um, and that is also related to some advanced features of i3 run the program that we are talking about in this video um, you can see there is something with rename and rename instance rename class and rename title and you can use that to uh, rename yeah the instance or the class or the title of a window when when it's being created so you yeah, it does what it say here, but it is also somewhat advanced here, and it's hard to, to show why you would use that uh, before we talk about window rules and i3 king and stuff. So I save this for the next video. But uh, there's also this novel feature, <laughs> I just realized, the uh, mouse, I never used this, I'm not sure if it works anymore, but it should work. Uh, mouse, the window will be placed on the location of the mouse cursor when it is created or shown and this needs x2 tool as a dependency um, so uh, to illustrate that I guess uh, let's make this guy floating again then we can um, open sublime uh, and here we have the key binding if we use a mouse here also the command line option save and then we press mod t just focuses the window because it exists on the current workspace we press it again it's ah that's right we also have no hide so it doesn't it, it will never hide the window we don't want that we actually want to hide it now so mod t mod t ah also reload sorry i'm an idiot mod t there now it's on the scratch pad and now we have the mouse option here so if the mouse cursor is here i press mod t you see the window is moved to the mouse cursor and it also adjusts the window you can see it's kind of a, a neat uh, border here how close to the edge of the screen it is and that's because it will never move it outside of the current workspace so that means that even if the mouse cursor is like here that would mean it would place like just a quarter of the window would be visible but actually it will adjust uh, the position so it never goes outside that's how that works and it works it should work for all borders i should be careful here because the, this might very well have a bug somewhere but it seems to be working fine isn't that incredible mod t yeah it even takes the bar into account um i'm a i'm a genius whatever uh, that's how mouse works but last now i want to show you this because this is uh, this is what i like most about this i3 run is that if we toggle the floating state of htop it's tiled and then we can move it up now it's here we can resize that container a bit and uh, now we have i3 fira layout you know so that means if i move htop up this happens if i move it up again we toggle the the other container there if i shift the focus to sublime move that down toggles the the container but now we can actually use uh, i3 run to all, will also toggle the container if the window we target is located in a hidden container i know it's a lot of words there but it is just it just works so mod t 
and now it actually shows that container. And how that is different here from what I showed you before is that it actually brings this tiled container back, uh, put, puts it in the correct position. So now that works, you know, I, I told you that tiled containers uh, are otherwise will not, um, the position will not be remembered. If we just bring it back tiled and then use the default i3 tiling mechanism, meaning it will put the window next to the currently focused tiled window. But even if this window has focus, I press mod T, it will still put it in the correct uh, tile position. And the other difference is that it, uh, it actually brings the whole container uh, with it. So if we do this, you see now we have uh, four, three terminals also in this container. But if we, even if we have that, if I press mod T now, what will happen? It focuses HDOP. And that of course works if a different tab there has, has focus, mod T, focus HDOP, press mod T again. It hides the whole container, takes all of those other tab uh, windows with it and brings all of them back also. And you can see it works quite nice. It works fast and everything and it remembers the split size, which is also <laughs> something that i3 doesn't do ever. And it even works uh, if it has a different position like this, you know, it still puts it in the correct position. And that is it's, it's like um, i3 run um, cooperates with i3 FIDA here for this to work. So you have to have the i3 FIDA layout active, of course, for this to work. But even if you don't, as I showed you, because up until we created the i3 FIDA layout, we were using i3 run anyways, and then it also just works. You never have to think about these things. That's, that's my reasoning here. It might sound... Uh, <laughs> very complicated and all, all of these rules and the different states and everything but that's the whole thing is that you shouldn't have to think about this uh, and you shouldn't definitely not have to have multiple key bindings so because uh, default i3 you would have have to have at least two key bindings like one for focusing the window and one for launching the application and then you have to keep in mind if the application exists or not and that can be tricky to do if the window would be on the scratch pad you know and you probably would like a third key binding to toggle the state between the scratch pad. So at least three key bindings. And then you would also probably need a key binding to send it to the scratch pad. So it just gets really messy without this and really easy with it. Um, and this is actually the first, I think it's the first bash script I wrote actually. Um, I have of course uh, updated it many many times since the first version the first version was terrible it was like a very bad 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 bash but it was like the start of my whole uh, like bash journey in a way was creating this script and i w i created it because i was missing this feature that you couldn't uh, run or race a program that you had to have two different key bindings i wanted the same key binding for that and I was surprised that i3 there was was no way for i3 to know if a window existed or not uh, and i remember asking on the subreddits how to do that and they were like yeah no you cannot you're not supposed to do that and the blah 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 and if you want to do that you should use the ipc and i was like what is this what what's the ipc now i i have no idea and then i tried to figure out what the ipc was by looking at the documentation here okay so uh, here, inter-process communication, IPC, inter yeah, that sounds interesting. And then you start reading here and it's like, oh man, we have to be some kind of a, what, what's this? I, I, I don't, I, I don't know this. I, I, my IQ is not this high, you know, uh, but I figured out how to do that with bash. And then I went back to the i3 subreddit, like two weeks later, I was like, I, I did it guys, check this out. And everyone was like, Oh, a bash quit. You cannot, if you're not supposed to use the IPC like that, and it's what, whatever, guys. Screw you, I'm going to the home directory, you know. <laughs> uh, whatever, whatever. That's that's actually the start of, of it all. So, that, uh, i3 run has a special place in, uh, for me. Uh, and it is, I think it is my favorite one of all of this. Uh, not just because of that, also because it is... Um, it does such a useful thing in my opinion and it works fine or really well in any kind of setup so if you haven't tried this and you are using i3 please please give this a try at least i remember i got an issue someone was asking me hey does i3 run 
uh, does that work with the scratchpad? I was like, yeah, it, it, or work with the scratchpad. It, it, it automatically just handles the scratchpad. And then, then that guy, he was like, oh, well, actually, that is not what I want. I want something that is completely compliant with the scratchpad. And that is why I wrote my own script here. That I was like, whatever, you just hear advertising your own crappy, <laughs> crappy script here in my... Um, issue tracker or whatever you can probably find that issue there i closed it immediately of course uh whatever it it, ha it is very much compliant with the scratch pad it's so compliant that you don't even have to know what the scratch pad is i like to think of it like minimize windows and that's also by the way i remember i listened to a pod podcast once and they were talking about tiling window managers and one of the hosts said that he couldn't use tiling window managers because they cannot minimize windows. Why, why is that not a feature of a tiling window manager that you cannot minimize a window? That's, that's kind of a basic functionality that is just ingrained into most people's, like even someone who is completely uh, computer illiterate knows how the minimize function works and probably use it all the time and I, I use it as well when I can when it exists but it it just doesn't exist in in tiling window managers but i3 have this solution for it the scratch pad which is kind of awkward much more awkward than just uh, minimize or I think it's called iconify in in like unix language like um, um, fv double WM language speak, you know, but it's the same thing. Uh, and when I came to i3, I came to i3 from <laughs> came to i3. <laughs> I I came to i3 from an awesome window manager. An awesome window manager have a run or raise uh, command by default in in like a, a core command or whatever that does more or less uh, this. And I was surprised to not find it with i3, so that's why I created my own. And so this is the start of i3s, was i3 run, and it's the alpha and omega, i3 run. Have a great day, everybody. See you in the next video. Bye.